Do you know there's one piece of equipment that most people agree is especially helpful to have when you're on the trail or at camp, and that is a shovel. At the same time though, most people don't carry one for the very simple reason they're usually too heavy and too bulky. Well, I may have the solution to that. This is the Near Zero tit Ultralight Titanium Shovel. If you're interested in hearing more about it, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank Near Zero for sending me their ultralight titanium shovel so that I could share it with you. So what I thought I would do is take you down to my bench top. We'll go over some of the reasons that you may want to carry a shovel with me with you when you're on the trail or at a camp. I'll show you some of the options that I've carried over the years, and then we'll bring this shovel in. We'll talk about it and see how it stacks up against those other choices. So why would you want to carry a shovel with you in the woods anyway? Well, the first reason that comes to mind, and one that probably will be used more often for this than anything else, is uh, digging a cat hole. A cat hole is a small shallow hole that you dig in the ground to bury your body waste. And true, you can use a, sh uh, a stick for that, and uh, I've done that many times, but by having a small lightweight shovel with you in your pack, that job is made so much easier. In fact, some places you may not even be able to easily find a stick that you can use for that purpose. So yeah, a cat hole. Now the number one reason after that, at least that I could think of, is uh, fires. So to start with building a fire pit, if you're trying to do a leave no trace fire pit where you want to take the top surface off of the, off the forest floor and then build a fire there and bury it again, you need some type of tool that you can dig with. Um, honestly, you'd probably need to do more work than that to dig a good uh, or make a good fire pit. So a shovel of some strength and size is especially helpful for building a fire pit. And not just building a fire pit, but for maintaining it, such as cleaning it out. If you have come across your fire pit and it's full of coals, dead coals that are soaking wet, you don't want to try and build a new fire on top of that, a shovel makes that job a lot easier and a lot cleaner. You don't get quite so dirty doing it. Sh fire management while the fire is burning. You can move your coals and sticks around with a shovel and place things in the fire, especially if you're doing things like uh, baking when you have a cast iron oven or any other improvised oven that you want to put some coals on top. A shovel makes that so much easier. Or if you're doing uh, foil wraps and you're wrapping your food up in aluminum foil and you want to place them in the fire and dig them out again, then a shovel again makes that a lot easier. And then of course burying your uh, leftovers from a fire after you make sure that they're well out and everything is cold and wet and you want to leave no trace, then you can dig a hole and bury the remnants of your fire as well. So that's a, a number of reasons right there. If we, you enjoy having a fire as I do, then a shovel is almost a necessity. Um, what else can you do with a shovel? Well, you can build a Dakota fire hole. That's something that's hard to do without a shovel. It can be done. You can use your hands. I can't do that here because I have just loam or duff and then rock. So <laughs> there's not really a place for me to build a Dakota fire pit in this area. But if you have area and the type of soil that you can do that, that with, shovel is so much easier for doing that. A coyote well, and basically for those of you who may not be aware, a coyote well is you dug is a hole or a pit dug and water allowed to seep into it. And that's used where you don't have a fresh source of water, a spring, a lake, a river, anything else, and you need to find a source of water. Um, you can do that by digging a pit and allow it to fill in. Now, you have to either have to wait till the sediment clears out, or you have to have something like a mill bank bag to clear most of the sediment out of before you filter and process your water. Water. So, but that's still the area for a shovel, a good use for one. How about just basic shelter building? Now, most of the time, my shelters consist of tarps and or tents. I rarely, unless I'm doing it for a, a skill building session and I do it in an area where it's permitted, I rarely bring down a number of trees and branches and things to build shelters. Nice to know how to do it, not practical most of the time, actually not all that practical at all. It takes a lot of energy and time to build them. And in a lot of places, you're just not allowed to do that. So I would say shelter building, yes, but mostly for uh, burying or digging a trench maybe, or a hole that you want to put up your pole in, and trenching. There's another use for one. If you have an area where it doesn't look as if it, if it rains, the rain is not going to soak in quickly, and you're setting up a tent or a tarp, and you want to make sure the water doesn't run underneath the tent or tarp, then a trench 
trench along the outside drip edge can be very helpful and a shovel goes a long way to making that job easy. Uh, yeah, so I can think of a few more, maybe in the winter, but you're going to build, want to build a snow shelter, either as a, a skill building exercise or something that you actually want to camp in, then a shovel will come in handy. Now, truthfully, most of the shovels I have that I'm showing you today are not the ones I'd carry in the winter because they don't have enough volume on their spade area for moving a, a lot of snow. But they are small enough that I can carry them with me most of the time and use them if I need to in an emergency. So those are a few reasons that you may want to consider carrying a shovel with you. So maybe what I'll do now is ask you, what, are, what reasons would you add to my list for carrying a shovel with you? All right, before I share with you the ultralight titanium shovel from Near Zero, I wanted to show you a few of the choices I've made over the years. We'll talk of just briefly about their pros and cons, and then we'll see how the Near Zero shovel compares against them. So uh, the one shovel that I had carried for a while, now this is a replacement for it, and I'll explain why in a minute, is just an ultralight plastic shovel. This is a Coglin's trowel, as they would call it, for digging cat holes. Uh, they're functional, they work, but they have very limited uh, usage. When you think of it, it really only has one purpose, and that is digging cat holes, and it works. And, you know, like I said, I did have to replace the one I had because I did break it. So they're not super strong, but they are super light. In fact, I wrote some of these down. Why don't I share this with you? The Coglins actually only comes in at 1.8 ounces, which is 52 grams. So you can see it's a very lightweight, compact item. But as I mentioned, it doesn't have a lot of versatility. It really is a one-trick pony in many ways. However, it's better than using your hands to dig holes with. So I upgraded to something after that that had a lot more versatility, and that's a garden trowel. So this came from one of our local hardware stores, and it is a steel garden trowel. In fact, I actually sharpened the edge a little bit to make it a little bit easier digging into the earth. And I've used this a fair amount. I've used it for fire pit building. I've used it for cat holes, obviously. I've used it for foraging a little bit. That's another use for a shovel. Could be foraging root roots on edible plants or medicinal plants. Um, there's a couple things about this shovel. Again, it is small. It makes it easy to pack and being made of steel, it is very durable, but it has weight and the weight on this is 9.2 ounces or 260 grams. So that's over half a pound for this. And look at it, it's still a small shovel. So you can do a lot of the tasks you want to do with a shovel, but you can't do as many tasks as you could with something bigger than this. So uh, yeah, good choice for some things, but not for a lot of the things that you may want to do with a shovel. So then I found this at our local thrift store, and probably a lot of people have seen these and used these, and this is a military folding shovel. This is often referred to as a, an e-tool or an entrenching tool, compact for sure, and it folds out. I'm sure everybody has seen these before. And then there's a collar here that you screw down to lock it into place. And as you can see, I have used this a fair amount, again, mostly for fire pit building and for digging cat holes. But this has actually got quite a bit of strength to it. So there's very little that you can't do with this shovel, but it has its downsides. Let's start with the weight. So the weight of the E-Tool is two pound, 6.5 ounces or we well, yeah, have one kilo, 92 grams. So heavy. And that's the biggest disadvantage for this shovel. As you saw, uh, it packs down pretty small, so it's not the size so much, although it is a bit short for a lot of the things that you may want to do with a shovel. Uh, it's more the weight than anything else. But if you need a heavy duty shovel for a lot of serious digging, maybe you're digging trench holes or actually building a more permanent shelter, this may be a good choice to have. And they're available. You can get them as surplus. So it's not as if, uh, you know, you can't find these or that they're overly expensive. It's just primarily the weight. So this doesn't go out very often unless I have a very specific purpose for it. Well, there is a shovel that I wanted to purchase and I may yet purchase it. And it's not that it's expensive. It's just, well, one, there's an availability issue here in Canada. And the other thing is that it, again, has some of the issues and some of the shortcomings of the other shovel. The Cold Steel Special Forces shovel, which is a near identical copy to the Russian Spetsnaz or their Special Forces shovel. Do you know, military people have been carrying shovels forever because they know the value of everything from latrines to foxholes to 
improvise weapons as well. Well, I haven't bought the cold steel shovel yet. Like I said, I may. They're not overly expensive. But what I did do is, well, it just so happened that I had a garden shovel that uh, the handle had gotten rather punky and the or the shaft got rather punky and the handle broke off. And I decided rather than even try to reshaft it because I had other shovels for the garden, I thought I'd just uh, modify it and see if I couldn't make a pack shovel of it. So that's what I did. So this was a larger garden shovel with a, a larger spade on the end of it. And even the collar was extended. I cut the collar off shorter. The handle, as I said, broke, so I cut it down to size and, uh, you know, this has actually worked. Again, this has dug quite a few fire pits. I did sharpen along the edge here a little bit, a little bit to make it easier. I tried sharpening here to see if it worked as a chopping tool. Uh, you know, it's for roots, and I have a lot of that in this area because it's, you know, a lot of trees. For roots, this thing is great for chopping. You don't use shovels for chopping wood unless you have nothing else and just about anything else would work better than a shovel anyway. But yeah, so this is great for chopping at roots because you're not going to use your axe or your knife for that. But that's about the limit of chopping you would do with a shovel of any type in, in my mind. This has worked wonderful, but look at the size of it. It is huge, and I think this is very close in size to the cold steel one. I think the cold steel's spade may be a little larger than this. What does this weigh in it though? I call this my D DIY shovel, one pound, 13.7 ounces or 843 grams. This is just about two pounds. Once again, heavy and bulky. So unless I have a specific task for it, it's not coming out with me, honestly. Okay, sorry about that. Let's bring into the picture the near zero titanium, ultralight titanium shovel and talk about how it addresses some of these issues. Now, there's a few things you have to bear in mind. No one shovel will cover all your needs and remain compact and lightweight. So this shovel is still a compromise in some areas, but it is still quite a bit more capable than a lot of the small shovels I have maybe not as capable as the large ones, but for most of the things I'll use a shovel for, I think this one probably fits. So here's what you get when you purchase the Near Zero Ultralight Titanium Shovel. So you can purchase this in two fashion. You can purchase this as just the head, and in that case, you're gonna get the head. I'll give you some close-ups in a second. And a nice little satin, nylon stuff sack. I don't need to show you too much about that. So here is the spade top end of the shovel, and you see there's a little pin on the bottom of it. I'll give you some more explanation how this operates. And you can purchase just this by itself along with this pin, or you can purchase it along with this 21 inch hardwood handle. And this is what was sent to me, these two items together. Um, I have a comment on the handle in a moment, but uh, let's just talk about the spade a little bit. So if we we're just looking at this, I have to open my notes back up to the right page for this, for the information. So here's where this one really begins to shine, and that is in weight. So this is 5.9 ounces or 168 grams. Very light for a shovel of its size. Of course, it is made of titanium and is 1.2 millimeter thick titanium and it is hardened. So it's actually a very tough little shovel for its size. Now, when I say little, it's bigger than the spades I have. It's approaching the size of the E-Tool and the DIY shovel, but it is a little bit smaller than them. So, you know, this will serve if I carried just this in the woods. I have my, my cat hole digger and I have my fire pit manager and I have most of what I need a shovel for, but what I don't have is reach and extension to this. So that's where that other handle comes in. But if you choose just to carry this, because most of the time you're just digging a cat hole, then uh, leave the handle at home. But if you find that you either plan on using it to dig a fire pit or dig something larger with it, either take the handle with you or make one when you get out in the woods. So let me just give you a few close-ups, then I'll install the handle on. So you can actually see the fold over here is actually welded, so that gives some extra strength. It has one single seven millimeter hole running crosswise through the pin. It is rolled over here so that you have some strength for the spade as well as somewhere to put your feet if you want to. 
Uh, it is not sharpened on the edges. edges. You can do that if you wish, but I don't think for the purpose of this shovel that I'm likely to do that. Okay, let's install the handle on. Now, I'll point this out. That little piece of, of uh, Gorilla Tape on the end of it is just there to keep the rattle down. It really has no other function. So it is, as I mentioned, 21 inches of hardwood. Bring it into the handle, line up the hole. Now, this pin has a ball bearing detent on this end of it, which are spring loaded and activate it on this end so that you can run it through the holes and the pin, the ball bearings spring out. And there we are. Now I have a fully installed shovel ready to go with a considerable amount of reach on it. And I was practicing and playing with this out here in the woods and I found it to be quite effective for digging. Again, cat holes and fire pits, probably the two biggest things that I'm going to be using a shovel for. But it does have a few limitations that we'll talk about in a moment. And well, actually we'll talk about them right now. So here's what I found uh, using this shovel. And that is, I have reach. I don't have to bend over so far to go to the ground, but that reach actually can be a con on the shovel as well. And the reason is I was digging a hole because I wanted to bury some old charcoal from the fire pit. And what I found is I came in contact with, it must've been either a big root or a rock, but I found that when I tried to use the leverage, I could feel the shovel about to start bending. Now it didn't, there was no damage to the shovel because I withdrew before I caused any damage to it. But it, what, it occur, uh, what I dis, uh, decided from that is that the extra length that you have on the handle gives you more leverage and maybe too much, too much leverage for the strength of this titanium head. Now, maybe that length is of value. You just have to keep in mind that you don't want to be prying this as you would any other steel shovel of this size because you could end up bending it under that pressure. So, uh, yeah, it's still functional. Now, here's a couple things you could do with this to bring it into a more usable size, and that is cut the handle down. Just cut it down and make it a more compact shovel, easier to put in your backpack. And if you need to make a, an improvised shovel handle while you're out in the woods, you can always do that. I decided to see if I can make a handle for this shovel and something I'm more likely to carry than the full length one. So I went to uh, my stack of things that I refused to throw out and I had an, an old broom where the head had snapped off, the wood had gone punky, and I cut a 12 inch section out of it. Now I have a leg bolt going through the end of this one because I wanted to show that as an option, but let me just take that off, that leg bolt. because, and oh, I might as well talk about the leg bolt even now. So one of the reasons I brought the leg bolt along is that um, you wouldn't want to lose this pin. Now, it's not a fatal flaw if you do end up losing it because, uh, you know, just about anything crosswise through the stick is going to hold the shovel head on. In fact, for a lot of the uh, things you're going to be doing with it, it's not likely to come off. It'll stay on with friction and force that you're using it. But it's really nice to have something that goes through and keeps the shovel head from falling off. So if you ever did lose this, I believe Near Zero sells replacements for it, but the hardware stores sells leg bolts of a given size that will go through. So that's why I brought that along just to show that you could use that. All right, so this is my short handle and I'm going to install it on. It's not as perfect a fit as the factory one, but it works pretty good. I have to fiddle with the handle a little bit to get it to go on perfectly or go on all right, that's better, yeah. Oh yeah, the hole, to line the holes up just right. There, okay. So I have my homemade 12 inch handle installed, even put a little piece of paracord on the end of it. Now to me, this is a more reasonable size for this shovel. It'll fit in my pack or I can separate them into two pieces. Again, fit them in my pack. And this will do most of what I want this shovel to do for me. Again, digging cat holes or digging a fire pit or cleaning a fire pit out or managing the hot coals of an active fire. Yeah, so there's a few options and a few pros and cons on the shovel. So in terms of weight to strength ratio, 
the titanium shovel does come out on top. You have something that is stronger for its weight, larger for its weight, and, and now what's the downside? Of course there's always going to be a downside. It's more expensive than most of these shovels are, especially like that e-tool that I picked up at a thrift store. You want to pick up at a surplus store. Maybe you have one from your time in the service. Uh, the little Coglins plastic one, uh, that's, they're very, very cheap. Hardware store uh, trowels for gardening, they're not all that expensive either. Um, you could buy one of the cold steel uh, special forces shovel. You're going to pay a bit for those, but again, not too much. But with all those shovels, you have size and weight ratios that they have to consider. So is this the ultimate shovel for carrying while you're out on the trail? I don't think it's the ultimate shovel, but I think what it is, is it's a good compromise that's versatile to cover most of the needs that you would have for a shovel while you're out there. If you need something bigger and stronger, likely you knew that before you headed to the woods, and that day you pack your bigger and stronger shovel. Is there a shovel that is in the same genre that would do better than this? Well, th there is one. Um, the availability and price is makes it kind of outside of the market for most people. And that is there is now a Spetsnaz, a Russian Spetsnaz Special Forces titanium shovel, same size as their other one, but they're expensive. They can be had, but you're going to pay a lot of money for it, a lot more than you would for this shovel. Now, this still has a price to it, and I will be putting the information on where you can check out the price for this in the video description below, but it's much cheaper than that Russian titanium shovel, and really not much more than some of these shovels are that I showed you today. Okay, I think I've shared everything that I want to. Maybe I'll give you a few demonstration of this in use, and then we'll wrap up. There's a lot of roots in here. There we go. Huge root right there. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to cut that. A lot of roots. A right, little bit of a hole. All right, a few more comments on the near zero ultralight titanium shovel. So as you saw from the demonstration, this shovel has a big enough spade on it that it's quite effective at clearing out a fire pit full of coals and will do all the other tasks you would want to do around a fire. It also allows you to dig a hole. Now, a couple comments on the hole and the burying of the coals like I just did in the demonstration. Number one, and, and yes, this should go without saying, but just to be sure that I do say it, is that please be sure that the coals are wet and cold, not just cold, but wet and cold. And that just ensures that there's no way that the coals will have any heat or activity in them that may and cause a forest fire at a later date. Because as you saw, this is just loam and duff that I'm burying these things into. Any active coals that I cover over there 
could very easily start a forest fire at a later time. So just make sure that they are completely out. Uh, the other thing is uh, the true leave no trace principle for remediating or cleaning up a fire pit like this is to broadcast scatter the coals all over the place so that they're not piled up in any one place. And that is a good principle and I would use that if it was a one of fire pit that I had just built here once but only used once. I would do that. But where I use this fire pit on a fairly regular basis, what I have chosen to do is dig holes that I can bury the coals in the the charcoal the not you know the leftovers not and nothing hot again so yeah now here's the other thing about digging that pit you saw that it was a struggle to do that and it wasn't because of the design of the shovel so much as it was just it's full of roots this the area here is softwoods primarily with hardwoods mixed through there were roots crisscrossing all over the place. It's hard to find a spot free of roots or rock, and that's the other thing we have more than plenty of here, to dig a hole like that. So I end up and digging quite a few holes, and I try to do it in a bit of a gully so that I can bring in more earth from somewhere else to cover up on top of it. So the only thing that would have worked better than this for doing that would be something like one of those heavy uh, special forces shovel with a sharpened edge that I could use to cut the roots out with and get a little deeper. But again, as I mentioned, this doesn't do everything, but it does most things well. There are some times when you're going to need something heavier than this, but this will do most of the heavy tasks and all of the lighter tasks as well. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted to share with you that uh, Near Zero sent me. So they're not just shovel makers. They make other things. They have a line of tents and other ultralight outdoor equipment, and they sent this along as a gift, and I just wanted to extend a thank you to them for this. And this is an ultralight titanium gas stove very small very powerful very quite noisy but very small and powerful stove now when i say titanium obviously some of it is brass but the pot supports and the base are all titanium so it makes for a very small lightweight stove okay i think i've covered the near zero ultralight titanium shovel in sufficient detail for you to decide if it's something that you're interested in purchasing so what i'll do now is i will invite you to pass me your comments give me your thoughts and suggestions and any questions you may have put them in the comment section below i will of course be putting the information for this shovel and i'll actually put in the information for the other choices that i had shown you if you're interested in seeing some comparison weights to sizes on those things and i'll put the information where you can purchase this shovel as well okay until until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.